Hi, I'm Julia Jackson, and I'm here today for a fireside chat with my friend, Namonte Nimpimo, and her lovely husband, Mitch Anderson. Hi, you guys. Hola. Nice to see you. Hola, Julia. ¿Cómo le va? ¿Cómo estás? Hace tiempo que hemos eh, encontrado, hemos visto, ahorita estamos eh, en el Ecuador de la Amazonía, trabajando muy lejos, pero estamos conectada. Hi, Julia. It's so good to see you. It's been a long time since we've, we've seen each other. I'm, I'm here in the Ecuadorian Amazon. I'm really excited to talk with you. Wonderful. Um, it's, it's really an honor to speak with both of you. about one of the most critical issues facing humanity. Um, for those of you that don't know and are tuning in, um, Mitch and Namonte run um, Amazon Frontlines. Which is an amazing um, organization and nonprofit dedicated to the conservation of um, one of our largest carbon sinks, if not the largest carbon sink on planet Earth, the Amazon. Um, so I first met Namonte at um, I believe it was at the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation Gala. And the climate space in, in general is a very privileged space with not a lot of diversity. And the more I've learned about the solutions to the climate crisis, the more I recognize that the most important solution is to protect our biosphere and empower the indigenous communities um, who steward these pristine ecosystems. And when I met Namonte and Mitch, I was really inspired about the concept of reciprocity, living in harmony and stewarding the natural world on behalf of the survival of humanity. Um, I founded a nonprofit organization, grounded.org, um, dedicated to um, amplifying and supporting solutionists, um, so climate solutionists around the world. And um, Namonte really inspired me a few years ago when I met her. She stood out um, at this gala um, in a privileged space um, as the most refreshing voice to me. And I think as a Western civilization, we have a lot to learn from indigenous knowledge, leadership, wisdom, stewardship, and how to um, walk with the earth and not take from the earth. Um, so I, I, I fell in love with Namonte and Mitch and their daughter Daime right away and um, felt a connection to our shared purpose. Um, and I, I would love if you guys could share the vision of Amazon Frontlines and um, all the amazing work you are doing to date. Bueno, eh, esto es muy importante. Como pueblos indígenas siempre vivimos en nuestra selva y tenemos conexión con nuestro espíritu, 
todo con los animales, la vida donde nosotros vivimos es un vivo y la cultura viva y seguimos conectados, no estamos desconectados, sino que lo que nos preocupa para la vida de nuestros pueblos que defendemos por miles, por siglos, años, es que eh, en nuestro territorio los, los poderes, los, eh, los capitalismos nos quieren entrar a explotar eh, petrolera, minera, maderas ilegales, quieren hacer provecho. Pero para nosotros es nuestra casa, nuestra vida y nuestros abuelos defendían y vivimos nosotros todavía. For us indigenous peoples, we've been living for thousands of years protecting Mother Earth, protecting our forests, our rivers, living in harmony with nature, protecting the wildlife. Um, and as an indigenous woman, and as a as a as a young woman, um, I'm leading my people to continue to protect these forests and continue to protect our territory. And what um, we're seeing today is that the economic system of capitalism, giant corporations um, are hell bent on extracting resources from our forests. They don't see our forests as a, our forest as a place of a source of life. They see it as a source of, of, um, of profit. And that's what we're fighting against right now as indigenous peoples. And this impacts all of us because um, 20% of the world's oxygen comes from the Amazon and currently 5% of all global greenhouse gases um, are sequestered by the Amazon. And so it's really important for us to recognize how critical Amazon Frontline's work is to conserve biodiversity. Nosotros como pueblos indígenas estamos protegiendo por miles de años, hasta ahora seguimos resistiendo, pero es riesgo vida, por eso es muy importante. No esperemos esa lucha sea para el pueblo indígena, sino todas las sociedades que estamos viviendo en ese planeta, de lo que amamos, de lo que defendemos, estamos haciendo para la vida de nosotros, vida para ustedes mismos. Por eso es muy importante que que Julia, tú o otras personas que está escuchando de este medio, nos pueden aliarse, nos pueden acompañar ese proceso de lucha, de detener ese cambio climático, lo que está provocando en el, todo el mundo que estamos viviendo hoy en día en este planeta. Sí, yeah, la protección de Amazon es is, is, um, about the protection of our climate, es about the protection of the entire um, planet. And indigenous peoples can't fight alone. You know, we cannot continue to protect our territories alone and go up against the, these big economic interests. Um, you know, and that's why, you know, as a leader of my people, I've been very vocal in making connections globally with people like yourself and others, and really asking for support and making sure that the world knows that indigenous peoples need global allies that can support them that can drive resources to our struggles and that's why i'm very thankful to be on this conversation with you. can you share um some of the challenges uh the waironi peoples have faced since covid and if deforestation has decreased has sorry increased um since covid or decreased de todo eso. Bueno, en el, durante el tiempo de pandemia ha sido un desafío muy grande, uno, porque el gobierno estado no ha respetado a nuestro territorio. Cuando todo, cuando llegó la pandemia decían cuarentena en las ciudades, más bien el gobierno dejó entrar más petrolero a trabajar normalmente y también ingresaron a algunas comunidades donde nosotros vivimos los madederos ilegales, era un momento de un aprovechamiento que no hubo respeto hacia nuestra casa y empezamos a trabajar duramente como mujeres líderes, eh, como nuestro propio protocolo, como nuestro propio eh, de salvar con nuestras medicinas ancestrales, con el conocimiento, con colaboración de nuestras abuelas, eso curamos, salvamos, por eso nosotros queremos seguir defendiendo porque única manera nos salvó la selva, las plantas medicinales. 
no salvó el Estado ecuatoriano, no salvó el médico a nosotros. Por eso es muy importante que nosotros queremos seguir, que seguir defendiendo y seguir esa manera trabajando con nuestro propio liderazgo, nuestra propia autodeterminación en nuestro territorio. During the pandemic, what we saw is um, big economic interest in the government. Instead of supporting us, helping us, um, they really sought to take advantage of the situation. Um, while our peoples were um, really dealing with the arrival of this new sickness, what we saw was the oil companies um, continuing to extract oil in certain areas of um, indigenous territories. And what we saw is also um, networks of illegal loggers Um, entering into our territories and trying to take advantage of the pandemic uh, and the lack of environmental regulations um, to to extract resources from our land. And for the Warani people and for indigenous peoples across the Amazon, really what we saw during the pandemic was how little we can trust the government and corporations and how much we can trust our own territory and how much faith we need to have in our own knowledge because in the end, it wasn't Western doctors or hospitals or the Ecuadorian government that was able to save us during this pandemic. It was our own knowledge and it was our territory. We were able to cure ourselves and heal ourselves with our ancestral medicines. And so that's the big lesson that we've learned during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And biodiversity as well, um is a hub for um, other other uh, diseases and it's just a natural um, process of um, ecological biodiversity that there are other future pandemics that could could um, spread if we do not protect um, biodiversity so not only is it important for um, climate and keeping global temperatures at bay it's also very important to protect biodiversity as well for our own survival and the correlation between um, future global pandemics and the onslaught of um, biodiversity and destruction of Mother Earth are directly linked. And so it's important for people to understand how critical protecting this biosphere is for our health and our future. Um, can you share a little bit about um, how how many, for context for everyone, how many acres there are in the Amazon and um, how many acres the Sabo Alliance has been able to protect and um, what has made um, your efforts successful? Eso para decir kilómetro, número, como el Guarani no sabe, podría yo imaginar que viajé en California, que conozco donde mi esposo vive, diez veces más es diversidad que tenemos en la Amazonía, es un sel selva verde muy grande, donde los animales, donde los jaguares, donde los ranas, lagartijas, donde los peces, donde las plantas curantes, curativas que tenemos, una diversidad grandísima tenemos y nosotros eso estamos protegiendo, no es suficiente nuestra lucha para salvar eso, es muy importante con esa crisis económica que estamos viviendo, nuestro gobierno no lo va a respetar, el gobierno va a querer entrar a explotar, eh, de, eh, destruir nuestra selva y nos perjudicaría a cambio climático, a planeta, por eso es importante como gente de ustedes que, que son, que aman a la selva, que, que piensen en el futuro, tienen que aliar, ya no esperemos porque yo tengo mucho miedo, el gobierno nunca va a respetar el derecho de la naturaleza ni a los pueblos, va a querer explotar para desarrollar en, en los países, por eso es importante, eh, grandes UNGS recaban fondos, y no llega al Ecuador directo, porque ahora de esa manera nosotros lo que estamos haciendo en lucha ya no vivimos como...